the Baptist was the forerunner. Preaching repentance and being baptized of water for your remission of sins that you might be able to receive Christ when he comes. You see. And through my study, they say this whole book. You see. Well, let's say the first 44 books. You see. Mainly the first five books of the Torah. You see. All of those words, all those instructions given by the prophet, you see, to prepare the people to receive Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, praise God. Amen. Why? He chose John the, John the Baptist. He said the word of the Lord came to John the Baptist. Giving him instructions, you see, on what to do. John the Baptist was famous in his own rights before he started preaching the repentance of God, uh, of Jesus Christ. You see, John was a priest out of the, out of the lineage. You know what I'm saying? Uh, out of the ordination out of the abiji oh, how can I say it uh, discipline you see see back during that time there were many sets and the day we look at them as monks and stuff like that but all of them practiced religion God's religion but we put emphasis on certain things so the word of the Lord came to John the Baptist, telling him to baptize the people, yeah. you see. But what made John so famous? See, John was famous before he started preaching Jesus. John was a priest. And back during that time, priests was the physicians of the people. They healed the people. At that time, intercessions were made. So they went behind the holies of holies, you see. And he did the work good work for the people. John was a great healer. You see. John had many disciples. You see. But John was a Jewish Nazarite who who started the baptism of submersion. Uh, is it submersion? Immersion. Of immersion. You see. Jesus thought that was great. You see. Jesus thought that was great. Because Jesus went to John to be baptized. You see. Now John, when Mary was with Jesus, her great aunt. Now this, 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 this is what the scholars say now. The great aunt uh, Someone, it was a bloodline, maybe through marriage or through family bloodline. But Elizabeth and Mary were kin. You see, Jesus, when, when Mary was with birth, she went to see Elizabeth. And the book says, you understand, that John jumped in the womb. All praise the Lord. But when John started his ministry, John said he, do that, he did not know Jesus. Well, the Spirit came to him. You see, that is so important. You see, to pray, to find secret time with the Lord. All right. You see, because we all know we are a piece of his puzzle. Mm -hmm. You see, and we all are searching for directions, searching for that which will satisfy him. Yeah. You see. And the glory of satisfying God is their mission to his kingdom. Amen. Ain't that right? But those who've been touched by Jesus Christ, you see, 
You have no more authority on your own, you see. We fight it and we go against it. But it's there. And we circle around and come, and we have to come back, you see. Because God is in us. Jesus got something for you, you see. So just as we pray and ask for that guidance. But John the Baptist, you see, he had one of the biggest job of all, you see. He was setting the foundation of Jesus' ministry. You see. But surely John say he baptized with water. But one to come is greater than he. You see. He couldn't even loose, he couldn't even tie up the sandals on his feet. You see. And he's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Oh, praise God. You see. Now. All those, you see, who God has chosen, you see, to help bring all the other sheep back into the fold, you see, has been given a gift. You all have been given a gift, you see. And you got a bunch of angels to help you with your gift. But you got to stay in tune with God, you see. You got to stay in tune. Through the teaching and and, and 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 a way with life in that of Christ, so that we may get our mission of what we need to do to be to satisfy God. You see, but John the Baptist, it's 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 you can't say but so much about John. You see. Because Jesus said, John is greater than any man born a woman. There is no greater man than John the Baptist. You see, John chose John, you know what I'm saying, to present Messiah to us. See, John said he did not know. He didn't know Jesus. But, the angel told him, you see, the Spirit of God told him, go baptize. Go baptize the people for the remission of sin, you see. And that one, you see, and which the Spirit will descend on, you see, and say, then that's your Messiah, you see. John didn't know the Messiah, you see. But John saw him Coming to him from afar off. You see. How do you know? How do you know? Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. You see. None coming to the Father but by him. So his eyes were full of light. And when John was looking in the spiritual realm, his spiritual self, you see, that's when you can see spiritual things, you see. So when John was baptizing Jesus, he was full of the Spirit, you see. And he was able to see the Spirit, the holiest of the Spirit, when it descended on John, you see. Surely that was an amazing sight, you see. And prophecy was fulfilled. The books, the, the, they say John the Baptist was the last greatest apostle, apostle before Christ. He was the last greatest prophet before Christ. You see. So John is, 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 John is something you can emulate. You see. John is something that you can really want to be like if you really want to satisfy God. You see. Now, are there any John the Baptist today? You see, are there any? I'm here to say, yes, they are. Oh, praise God. Yes, they are. You see, when you got somebody who want to prepare the way, you don't have to prepare the way nobody, the way no more, but you can usher them in. Come on, I want to tell you about a man. I want to tell you about a man so great. I want to tell you about a man who 
Not only in this body, you see, but he's great in the next body. He ain't only great in this world, you see, but he's great in the spiritual world, you see. He has the keys to heaven. He has the keys to hell, you see. Oh, praise God. So when you're a man like John the Baptist, you get to introduce a man like Jesus. Oh, wonderful thing. Such a wonderful thing. But if there's any John the Baptist today, I'm here to tell you, yes, it is. You see, all of us at one time, you uh, um, go walk in the ways of John the Baptist. But I'm here to tell you about a man, you understand. When the Lord touched his heart, he's way over there in Africa somewhere, you see. And the Lord said, go build a church. Go get a church, you see. Do we have John's today? You see. Yes, we do. You see. Yes, we do. So when you sit back and, and, and see, you have to take a long time. A long, not a long, but a long time with yourself, you see. So you can see the, 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 the manifestations of God. So you can see the manifestation of Jesus' teaching. You see. But if you're out here in this world and you see everything in the world, you're going to miss it. You see. Plenty of signs. Why was John the Baptist so important? Why was he so important? You see. Because he ushered in. You see. One of the main, main, Elements of receiving Christ. But Christ see you got to be. Cleansed. You got to be baptized in the water. For the remission of your sin. You say. And then I will bless you with the Holy Spirit. Oh praise God. There's none greater than John the Baptist. I'm here to tell you. I saw just the other day. You see, you know, some things in this life we think is odd. You see, if everybody else ain't doing it, we think it's crazy. You see, but as I read this book, the things that God asks people to do, you see, they seemed odd. They seemed a little crazy. They seemed a little out of touch. You see. That's why we are, are, are taught and admonished, you see. Everything that the world loves, everything that the world loves is far from God. You see, it's far from God. You see, but John, John the Baptist, I'm sorry. I'm going to get back and tell you about this little incident I saw the other day. I'm sorry. I, I get wrapped up sometimes. But I saw a lady. You know, we talk about the weirdness of things. But I saw a lady dressed in red. You see. And she carrying a big shield. With a, like a red, a shield with a red heart on it. You see. Now, people looking at it and say, well, she just sanctified. Oh, she just overzealous, you see. She just overboard, you see. But on her shield, she said, Jesus love you. He's coming soon. Oh, praise God. Oh, praise God. You see, see we know after, after Jesus' death, that became the most powerful of sermons. You know what I'm saying? It's his return. You see? And we are you see uh, teachers of the book. We are that nobody knows it better than we do. You see? How important John the Baptist But if you was to see John the Baptist today, you see the man girded in, girded in camel hair with a big leather belt around his waist, you see. And everybody else 
is going by life in one way. And he said, no, come on, I received the word, you see. You need to be baptized for the remission of your sin so that you might be able to receive Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, praise God, you see. And I sit back and I wonder and I think, you see, who would listen to him? Everybody else got robes and raiment. Here it is a man living in the woods, in the wilderness, eating locusts and honey. You see. Who would listen? You see. Many listen. You see. Because he had signs and wonder to prove what he was saying. You see. <coughs> Excuse me. He had signs and wonders. You see. See, these days and times, signs and wonders have dwindled down. Oh. We can't see out our spiritual eye with purity to recognize it when we see it. You see? I know the book teaches that God won't do anything. You know what I'm saying? Except he sent a warner. He says he sent a prophet. He gonna tell you about it before it get here. You know? John the Baptist. As I read him, I get so inspired. You know, we all need to be like John the Baptist. We don't need, you know, the camel clothing. We don't need the belted, uh, a belt girded around our loin. You see. But we need a heart. You see. We need a heart like John the Baptist. We need a heart to get out there and preach it when everybody else is turning their back, when everybody else is looking another way, when everybody else is thinking you're crazy. You see. We need persistence. You see. And surely, the Holy Spirit assured John that it was okay. Many followed John. John had plenty of disciples. You see. Paul was up in Ephesus. And he ran across, you know, some, some Christians. And, he, and, and they say they was baptized by John for the remission of sin. But they didn't even know, you see, about the baptism of Christ with the Holy Spirit. And they say they said Paul baptized them. In the name of Jesus Christ, that they might receive the Holy Spirit. So John was a great forerunner, you see. Now I know, you know, we've been preaching this from 2,000 years ago, right after Christ, about his coming, you see. About our resurrection, you see. <coughs> but don't. Don't get tired, you see. Renew yourself by reading the book, you see. Because it will come to pass, you see. John, John the Baptist, a great inspiration, a great leader, you see. We need to step in the shoes of John. But we can't step in the shoes of John. You see what I'm saying? We're just going to walk about and be the best Christians we're going to be. You see? We're going to love our neighbor. You know, one of the one of the, the commandments that Jesus gave, which was two. You see? And it's one that which we, you know, ain't nobody can't judge you how much you love God. You see? That's something personal between you and God. You see? But they can judge you. By how you treat your neighbor. Yeah. You see. So if you go along. You see. And you see people doing the good work. Thank God for them. 
you see. Pray that God give them the strength to continue. Oh, praise God, you see. And that's what we have to do. We have to love our neighbors as I said. You see, I think that's one of our biggest obstacles. But one thing we don't have to do is one thing that we don't have to do. We don't have to worry. You see, if you believe in Jesus Christ, you see, then you don't have to worry. You don't have to worry about <coughs> if the bill's getting paid. You see, you don't have to worry. You see, is I'm going to have enough money to put a little fuel in my automobile. You see, you don't have to worry. You see, because worry, worry is the interest paid on trouble before it's due. Give Jesus his acclaim. You see what I'm saying? When you think you're going to worry. That's, now this is before you worry. When you think you're going to worry. You know what I'm saying? Run to Jesus. You see what I'm saying? Put it in his lap. You see. And don't get up off your knees. You know what I'm saying? Till you feel peace. And when you feel peace inside yourself. You see what I'm saying? Don't go back and do the same thing as far as worry. Worrying is over with. You don't have to pay interest on trouble. You see, because our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you see what I'm saying? He going to take care of it before it's due. You see, that's the wonderfulness of Jesus on this plane. You see, that's the wonderfulness of Jesus on this plane. Because Jesus said, if you don't worry on this plane, you see, ain't no worry in heaven. There is none. There is none. Only thing you got to do is praise God. Praise God. Praise God. That's all you have to do. Be a believer. Yeah. You got to be a believer now. Amen. You see. And have faith. We worry because we like the faith in Jesus Christ. You see. That's the only reason why we worry. And a lot of times, you know, we worry because we know we ain't, we, we, we might have just didn't live just quite right. We might have stepped off our path for a minute, you see. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that, you see. Because with the Holy Spirit comes the self-accusing spirit. And the self-accusing spirit is that which will keep us straight on the path, you see. So when we step out. The self-accusing self spirit, it will let us know, you see. Now, we can yield, or we can go ahead on, you see. But all those who believe, all those who got the faith, you see what I'm saying, we yield to the self-accusing spirit. Because we know when we yield to the self-accusing spirit, we don't submit ourselves to Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. And as we submit ourselves to Jesus Christ, you see, all the doubt, all the uncertainties, all those things that we worry about that we shouldn't worry about, they became nothing. It becomes like dust. You see, the more you Build your faith, you see. I don't say believe, you see. Because we believe when we got the faith. But we got to build the faith, you see. We got to build the faith, you see. And it comes. It comes with abundance. It comes with abundance. That's right. So keep Jesus Christ in your heart. Keep him in your mind. Keep them in your forehead, you see. And watch life blossom. Watch life, you see. Gives you all that you desire, you see. For what? Because you submitted yourself to Christ. For what? Because you submitted yourself to Christ, you see. Jesus said, come unto me, 
You're laden and heavy laden. Yes. You see. And I'll give you rest. You see. I mean, it's those little earthly troubles is nothing. It's nothing compared to. For in his spirit, just thinking about him, you know what I'm saying, will cancel out all worries. You see. Growing faith, brothers and sisters. You know, as, I, as, I, as I end this message for today, who was John the Baptist? We all are John the Baptist. You see. We are all ushering God's children. You see. So that they might be recognized and name put in the Lamb Book of Life. So as I close with this benediction, brothers and sisters, may the Lord bless you as he's blessed us with John the Baptist and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace. Grace and peace. Multiply through the knowledge of God and the blessings of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May his word and his blessing be upon you.